so they're doing it they're doing the same thing that every other person does Amazon Prime Video uses Vanity Fair to attack critics of the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, as trolls. You're just a bunch of sexist trolls who hate women. Or maybe we don't like, you know, canon lore being destroyed? I'm just, just thrown with the wall to see what sticks here. But I also like, <laughs> now this is bounding into comics. Uh, <laughs> they talk about trolls, but the first thing you see are the ring rates. That's great. Amazon Prime, Amazon's Prime video appears to be using Vanity Fair to attack the Lord of the Rings fans who have criticized the show for not staying faithful to Tolkien's original work. Perfectly justifiable because there are plenty of fans of Tolkien's work who are dedicated, hardcore Lord of the Rings fans who know this more, the source material inside and out a lot more than these people working on the show. Unless they have like one lore master, uh, which may not be the case if they're fucking with the lore, but the fans generally know it's better for the show than the writers do. Every time we see this shit, you know, they did, the last one we saw was with Cowboy Bebop. Same fucking thing. You mess with the characters, and the fans get angry. So, and yet these people just keep doing it. You know, they're fucking stupid. They keep doing it thinking that, oh, it's going to be different this time. Oh, let's just badger and berate these people. Yeah, they're totally gonna just say, oh yeah, let's just forget it. Just watch this wonderful product being produced. No, they're not gonna watch it because you're fucking telling them how evil and fucking racist they are and how they're trolls who don't know anything. You're basically saying, fuck you, we don't need your money. And then when your shit goes down the, you know, down the toilet and you lose money, you're like, uh, I don't understand. What? Where's all the people? Well, I don't know. Maybe you told them to fuck off. As is expected in this modern era of woke, woke Hollywood, Prime Videos, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, ex, uh, executive producer, oh God, it's Lindsay Weber, explained in a puff piece for Vanity Fair that showed all, uh, the show altered and race swapped multiple characters in order to reflect what the world actually looks like. Well, that would be great if it wasn't established canonical lore. You showing what the world looks like today in a show that's being created about J.R.R. Tolkien's work based in Middle Earth, which is, you know, Celtic and all that, there weren't black people. <laughs> there weren't any black people. At least at this time, uh, when he was writing it. So, if you want to force your diversity and show on the way and reflect what the world looks like, go do it on your own time. Don't take someone's work and fuck it up just for your own uh, ideology. Stop that shit. In the article by Vanity Fair, the outlet reveals the show will include Lenny Henry playing a Harfoot, Sophia Novet playing the dwarf princess named Disa, who we've seen before, and Ismail, uh, Ismail Cruz Cordova playing an elf. I think that's the dude who looks like Don Lemon. Triforce! Triforce! Well, they got the rings of power. Maybe he's gonna uh, you know, connect to the Triforce somehow. Maybe we're gonna get Din, Nader, and Feror to show up. Whoever explained these casting changes stating, it felt only natural to us that an adaptation of Tolkien's work would reflect what the world actually looks like. But then you're taking it into reality. Tolkien's work is, you know, fictional based in a world where there's gnomes and goblins and orcs and 
ring race and fucking balrogs and dragons why should that world reflect the real world are you fucking stupid it's no longer fiction then it's no longer fiction if you're trying to make it reflect the real world she argued Tolkien is Tolkien is for everyone his stories are about fictional races doing their best work when they leave their isolation of their own cultures and come together exactly Tolkien is for everyone and has been since the beginning so why do you need to force diversity as if black people and Asian people and Hispanics as if they can't enjoy it are you fucking stupid One would think that when adapting a piece of fiction that has a storied history, one might think it would have been natural to reflect what Tolkien actually wrote rather than what the world actually looks like. Exactly. Like I said, think about what time period he, this was set in. Think about the area he was living in. Think about the places that Middle Earth are based on. There weren't black people. There weren't Asians, Nordic, Celtic, there weren't any fucking black people. There weren't any Asians. It was excessively white. Let's just take this work of fiction and just force in that diversity. Let's make it like the real world. It's like having the option to play a human in a fucking game. I mean, you're, you're already a human. Why not play a fantasy creature? It begs the question is why Amazon would even want to adapt Tolkien if they didn't want to actually reflect what he wrote. Exactly. Exactly. If you're not going to stick to the source material like they said they would, because they're like, Duh, don't worry, we're not going to mess it up. We're going to stick to the source material and we're going to honor the writings of the great J.R.R. Tolkien because we respect him. No, nope. let's just insert characters that didn't exist. Let's just insert races, you know, the colors that didn't actually exist at this time because, again, they're based on Celtic, Nordic, white. It has nothing to do with racism. It has nothing to do with any of that. You're forcing diversity for the sake of forcing diversity. Why can't you just stick to the guy's canonical lore? How hard is it? Why does everything has to why does everything nowadays have to have forced diversity in it? It's almost as like it's like with females. It's like, oh, we gotta have females and everything. We gotta have females doing this. It's like females are a brand new creature that's just popped up. These female creatures, I don't know where they came from, but uh we gotta get some representation going. Same thing with uh, black people. Now, like, black people need to be inserted into almost everything now. Because, oh, there's not a, these black peoples or whatever. They just came over from this one continent no one knows about. And uh, we, we, we got to force them into everything so people know what they are. You're using black people and other cultures as a prop as a prop and these people are so fucking stupid they actually defend it uh interesting the pr uh, puff piece by vanity fair then paints people who want prime video to stay true to tolkien's work as trolls well last i looked i don't turn to stone in the sun although i am big brutish and ugly i don't turn to stone when the sun comes up so you know, but then again, there are cave trolls, and so I'm talking more about the trolls like uh, when you've seen The Hobbit. Uh, they were trying to eat Bilbo, and the the dwarves get in the way, and you know, Gandalf comes, and the rock, and the sun, and they're like, Ugh. uh, <laughs> Vanity Fair is Anthony Bresniken. And Joanna Robinson, here to you, Mrs. Robinson. Jesus loves you. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, oh. God bless you, please, Mrs. Robinson. No, 
No, God, it's such a good song though. Oh God. Right, when Amazon released photos of its multicultural cast, even without character names or plots, the studio endured a, reflected, a reflexive attack from trolls, the anonymous online kind. What other kinds of trolls are there? And I'm sorry, anonymous? I put my face and name out there all the fucking time. The people who are commenting, uh, you know, Jeremy from the quartering, you know, as for heel versus, we're not anonymous. We put ourselves out there. So once again, these are people who are just, well, they have an opinion about what we're putting out because they know it's fucking shit. But uh, let's just keep berating them and, and, and acting like they're the problem. Uh, they try to go and deride, uh, deride the fans by citing the so-called Tolkien scholar named Mariana Rios Malo Maldonado. Maldonado is not a Tolkien scholar, but rather a PhD student at the University of <laughs> Glasgow, of course, who is interested in ethics. Oh, feminist. Oh, God. Is interested in ethics, feminist theory, and encountering other the other in Tolkien's work. What, what else do you expect from a woman from Glasgow? No offense if you guys are from Glasgow, but it's Glasgow. That sounds like a social justice warrior if there ever was one. If that didn't convince you, Maldonado also happens, oh God, to be the equality and diversity officer uh, for the University of Glasgow Center for Fantasy and, Fanta and the Fantastic. The Equality and Diversity Officer. Who are the trolls now? Is the no. nevertheless Vanity Fair and one suspects Amazon by associate, uh, association prop up this feminist as a Tolkien scholar to attack their fans. Maronado tells Vanity Fair, obviously there is going to be some push and backlash, but the question is from whom? Who are these people that feel so threatened or disgusted by the idea of an elf that is by the idea that an elf is black or Latino or Asian? Maybe because in the canon there is no black or Latino or La Asian fucking elves. <laughs> Read their descriptions. That whole like customization uh, for the most part of, of, of elves has come up recently. When you see elves, they're very fair skinned, skin like porcelain, you no, know, very white. No one's like, that shit was black. No, no. Because you got, where do the uh, the tales of elves come from? Think about that. If you think about where elves originate from, eh, that kind of tells you everything you need to know. So, just in case you guys were wondering, uh, in the woods you have you have it across a clearing full of strangely beautiful people. So, elf. What is an elf? An elf is a uh, mythical creature that appears to be, in human in, uh, to be human in nature, but has magical powers and does not age, or at least ages very slowly. It appears that elves have their origins in Germanic lore, but they also are commonly found in other European folklore. Europeans, back then, were white. Okay? So, there's no fucking black elves. It's not like the, Europe was not nearly at, it was not diverse like it is now, where you have uh, a small melting pot of, of cultures. No, it was white. So, no, we don't have a problem with that, but you're taking someone's established lore and fucking it up. Well, that's at, uh, well, that's actual fans of Tolkien's work who want an adaptation of it to stay true, uh, of it to stay true it, true to it, rather, I think is what they meant. 
which is what they said they would do. What a tough question, and wanting to stay true to the works does not mean you or threatened or dis uh, disgusted to imply as such. Uh, such shows you uh, you what kind of Tolkien scholar person uh, scholar this person is. Their first thought is to attack people. Sounds like a Tolkien villain named Grima Wormed. Not only does Vanity Fair and by association Amazon Studios attack the Lord of the Rings fans, but they also reveal that their casting changes were caused for fans to be concerned that if you can't get it right, you won't get the rest right either. Pretty much. Uh, <clears throat> and that happens to be the case for as Vanity Fair reports that showrunners uh, J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay have compressed events into a single point in time. That's right, they've completely done away with Tolkien's timeline, because why would we have it any other way? You come out, you say, oh yeah, we're gonna stay true to the lore because Tolkien was an amazing writer, and, and we're gonna do this as like a passion project, no. And then they fuck it up. See, that's what they, they do. They lure you in with promises like, oh yeah, we're gonna keep everything the same. All you fans, you have nothing to worry about. Oh yeah, we're, we're working closely with people who are, uh, you know, with the Tol you know, Tolkien Society and all that. We're, yeah, working real close. And then all of a sudden it's like, bitch slap. Yeah, you remember all that stuff we said we're doing? Yeah, we're not doing it anymore. We're doing whatever the fuck we want. And if you don't agree with it, you're a fucking racist. That's exactly what they're doing. The showrunners explain their decision. If you are true to the exact letter of the law, you are going to be telling a story in which your human characters are dying off every season because you're jumping 200 years in time. And then you're not meeting really big, important canon characters until season four. Sounds like they're not confident. There might be some fans who want us to do a documentary of Middle Earth, but we're going to be telling, but we're going to tell one story that unites all of these things. One story to rule them all. Ironically, Vanity, Vanity Fair noted how important the timeline and details were in Tolkien's earlier, uh, to Tolkien earlier in the article when they stated, these timelines, genealogies, and notes on uh, languages and culture became so important to Tolkien that he even stalled the publication of the final book, The Return of the King, to complete them. I mean, he, he did. <laughs> you know, Tolkien put a lot of himself, dedication, into these books every race has its own unique language that he created the man was a fucking genius when it came to storytelling that's why dungeons and dragons world of warcraft all these fantasy uh zelda you know they all take some inspiration from from tolkien's work the guy set a whole generation in in motion with this this love for fantasy and like uh, the medieval type settings and you know trolls and orcs and elves and dwarves and it, this man started it you know all these characters you know elves and dwarves they were all in mythology before but this guy took those characters co compiled them into a story that was cohesive and, and, and uh, just this fantastic story. And it resonated with, I mean, it's still resonating with people. Generations of people have, have read these books. It's just, it's crazy. In fact, Tolkien wrote, my chief interest is being translated in pecuniary as long as the basic text is treated with respect, so that even if the touchiness of parenthood is outraged, I should wish to refrain from doing or saying anything that may damage the good business of being published in other countries. I also, uh, I have also, and I have also Messrs. Allen and Unwin to consider, but the matter is a uh, matter of the appendices as a pecuniary uh, aspect uh, he wrote, he would add, I do not believe that they would give the work a scholarly uh, look, scholarly look, 
uh, and they play a major part in producing the total effect. As Bessers, Gabers, Translators, Translator has himself pointed out, uh, selecting the detail and the documentation as two chief ingredients in producing the compelling sense of historical reality. Tolkien even noted, actually an analysis of many hundreds of letters shows that the appendices have played a very large part in the reader's pleasure in turning library readers into purchasers and in creating the demand for other than another book. A sharp distinction must be drawn between the tastes of reviewers and of the readers. I think I understand the tastes of simple-minded folk <laughs> like myself pretty well. Uh, aside from Attack on the Lord of the Rings fans, maybe the most concerning point of the entire article is Payne and, McKay, Payne and McKay's pride that they can do Tolkien better than Tolkien. Yeah, this is when you've reached, uh, your, your mentality has reached God levels, where you think you can do what it is better than the person who created it. No one is going to do Tolkien better than Tolkien. He is the fucking man who made it. You're taking it and adding to it. But if it wasn't for him, you would have no base to start off of. You would have no lore in place. You would have no languages in place. You would have no characters in place. So no, you're not gonna do it better than the man who fucking created it. So you're up here, knock yourself down. He's up here. You're trying to be up here. Knock yourself down to here. That's where you should be because you're not gonna fucking do it better than Tolkien. I guarantee fucking tee it. So get off your high horse, knock that shit off. Uh, McKay told Vanity Fair that, uh, that the driving question behind the show was, can we come up with the novel, to uh, the, the novel Tolkien never wrote and do it as the mega event series that could only happen now? <sighs> We think the work will eventually sp speak for itself. Payne will, uh, would also tell them, before an or uh, orchestra starts, already audiences will talk to each other, but then as soon as the music begins, you're in and you're listening to that music. Oh, so now they're gonna try to compare the shit show to an orchestra. Oh, it's gonna be an orchestra, all right. Just... <laughs> What? These child doctors have turned to very d adult careers. Wow. The work is speaking for itself already and is very clearly deviating heavily from J.R.R. Tolkien's appendices and the Silmarillion. The Silmarillion, as fans suspect, <laughs> yeah, as the fans suspected, they uh, suspected when they first made casting announcements. Yeah, they did exactly what they we said they would do. They said they wouldn't, and they're doing exactly what we said. Once again, they're doing what they want, destroying lore, destroying characters for the sake of diversity, then telling the fans, oh, if you don't want it, if you don't like it, don't watch it. Okay, you won't watch it. And then when you start losing money, you're gonna sit there and wonder why you're losing money. People don't have a problem with diversity. Being forced diversity into a place like Middle Earth that is based on Nordic and uh, uh, Celtic and other you know, predominantly white places on their myths and lore. It, it, saying that black people aren't there, that's not racist, that's just fact. Like I said, it, it, Germany and, and Ireland and Scotland and all those places now, yeah, there might be black people there now, but back then it was predominantly white. So reflecting that, it's not going to make you a racist for reflecting that. Because you're sticking true to the lore of someone's writings. No matter how old it is. I mean... But hey, what do I know? Anyways, what do you guys think? Let me know below. You guys know the drill. I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.